You may be seated. Uh, yeah, we honor you today. Love y'all. And uh, man, without mom, where would we be, right? <laughs> you know, coming into to Mother's Day is a day to honor and celebrate your mom. But as I've kind of already talked about a little bit this morning, you know, Mother's Day can also be a very difficult day for many. You know, many people in this room, there might be their first Mother's Day that they're experiencing without their mom. And they're grieving the loss of their mom. Maybe in this room today, you have had a miscarriage, or maybe you are just struggling because uh, you've lost a son or daughter. And for many in this room, Mother's Day can be a very, very difficult, hard day. But I just want to encourage you with something today and just say this that, you know, Jesus, He's enough. Jesus, you got to understand this today. It's what I want to really get at. It's going to be a very simple message today. Jesus, he's more than enough. He's more than enough for your pain and for your grief and what you've walked through, and what you've gone through. Jesus is enough. That when you go and you hide yourself in a secret place and you get with the Lord, like he can come in, he can heal those deep places in your heart. Jesus is enough. We just say that out loud. Jesus is enough. You've also got to, got to know this this morning. If Jesus is enough, then you're also enough. Some of you need to hear that today. Jesus is enough, and because Jesus is enough, you're enough. You might be doubting yourself right now. You might be struggling with one of your kids, questioning some things, but you've got to know this morning that you're enough. I've entitled my message this morning this, Mom, you're enough. Mom, you're enough. If you like my notes, you can text notes to the number that's on the screen and receive my notes this morning. Let's, uh, let's pray and let's invite the Holy Spirit just to speak to us today. Holy Spirit, we thank you, God, that, Lord, you are with us. That, Lord, through every circumstance and situation, and many might be in this room right now and they are struggling. God, I pray that we know just this simple truth today. That because you're enough, God, then they're enough. That, Lord, maybe they're struggling with a child today, God. Lord, maybe it's just a hard, hard day for them. Maybe they're grieving something, Father. Lord, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit. It's nothing I can say or do, but only your Spirit at work. I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit, God, you would just bring healing, God, into their life. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we just pr pray and we ask, God, that, Lord, as we open your word today, God, that you would speak to us for your servants are listening. Lord, make your Logos word, your written word, make it alive in our hearts today. We love you, we thank you, and everyone said this morning, come on someone, amen, amen. You know, too many times we wanna disqualify ourselves from being adequate enough for a job. Maybe it's because of something that we have experienced in our past, Maybe it's because of something that someone has spoken over us. Maybe it's because we're trying to measure up to an impossible standard. But we've already discounted ourselves and said, we're not adequate enough for this job, and we've brought in self-doubt. What I want to do this morning is I want to give you three things from uh, the life and the motherhood of, of Mary that we can lean on and see and just encourage you with this to defeat these lies that we even speak over ourselves and these things that come into our mind and into our focus that we're not good enough or because someone spoke something over us, we can break these lies or uh, we're struggling right now and we're trying to measure up into an impossible standard because we're comparing ourselves with someone that something, someone's posted on social media. I'm just here to tell you this morning you're enough because God's enough. Mom, you are enough. So let's look at the the motherhood, the life of Mary, and she was a mom of, of Jesus, the Son of God. I mean, what an incredibly hard task, right? So the first thing I want to give you this morning is this. Mom, you're the right one for the job. Mom, you're the right one for the job. Think about this. Mary was by no means a perfect mom. And there's not a single 
perfect person in this room. But there are the right people for the job and the right mom for the job. And when you look at the life of Mary, man, she was not perfect. You might be saying, okay, Adam, she was perfect. No, she was not perfect. I promise you she was not perfect at all. Case in point, you can look at the word of God. We're about to read this story. But man, she lost Jesus. <laughs> Y'all, she lost Jesus not for one day, not for two days. She lost Jesus, the son of God, for three days. Look at this story. Luke chapter 2, verse 41. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. Now watch this. And Joseph and his mother Mary did not know it. Man, if this happened today, they would be on News Channel 4. <laughs> this would be a story on the 6 o'clock news. Verse 44, how do you not know that Jesus was lingering, right? Lingering. But supposing him to have been in the company. So they were traveling with a group. Y'all, you thought that the 1990s Home Alone was the first Home Alone. No, this was the first Home Alone <laughs> right here. At 12-year-old, this is Jesus. They went on a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. No kidding. Now, so it was that after three days. So again, Jesus was missing for three whole days. They found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. Now, this is where the story gets a little different than the Home Alone. I mean, uh, Macaulay Culkin, man, back in the day, he was defeating the robbers, but Jesus is sitting there in the temple teaching and learning from them. How can, imagine having Jesus as your son, and he's always right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, that'd be hard. You're right, Jesus, again, like, uh, no matter how old he is. Verse 47, and all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said to him, just, I wonder what tone Mary has when she says this to her. Does she have a really nice tone? Son, or she's like, son, right now, you know, like, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. AKA, they've been freaking out for three days. <laughs> I mean, they're just like, what is happening? I've lost the son of God. Like, man, I don't know. I've ruined everything for everyone. The savior, the Messiah, I've lost him. He's done for. Like, man, they're nervous that everything is looking. They're nervous that everyone is looking at her probably too, right? Could you, you imagine like when something goes wrong with your child and you have these eyes, like everybody's looking at you because your child's the one kind of messing up and they kind of probably know that in the temple that day that Jesus has been there and where's he been doing at nighttime? Like, I, I don't know. And, the, and they're sort of probably, she's thinking, are they judging me right now because I've been missing my child? Verse 49, and he said to them, why did you seek me? Jesus is always right. I mean, look at this. I mean, I can't imagine hearing this from my son. Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? <laughs> Mary, the one who was chosen by Jesus, the mother of the son of God, lost Jesus. Lost Jesus. You know, uh, back about 10 years ago, my wife, she was out with Ruth, and Ruth at the time was three. My son was a year and a half, and so I'm at home with my son. And so, you know, I do what every good father would do. I clean the house, get everything ready to go uh, for when she comes back home because, man, I'm going to get some brownie points that day because the house is clean. And so, you know, I put Caleb down because I want to get a nap in, you know, Saturday afternoon nap. You got to get that in. And uh, so I, I leave Caleb, you know, watching something like Paw Patrol and uh, just think, okay, everything's going to be okay. Well, he just, you know, started walking for a couple months now and he's learning how to open doors and everything. So, you know, I go lay down uh, for a nap and I wake up, I don't know how long it was, 30, 45 minutes later, and I wake up to uh, 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 the, the ring going off um, and uh, the doorbell. And so, you know, I, I'm groggy, I slowly get out of bed, go to the door, and my neighbor 
is sitting there right in front of me, standing there right in front of me, and she has Caleb in her hand, and she tells me, Caleb was playing in the street. So my initial thought was, please don't tell Laura. <laughs> I've lost every brownie point that I was trying to get by cleaning the house. And my second thought is, how in the world did he get outside? Well, I, I look over and apparently, you know, Caleb is, uh, we named him Caleb because it means taking the land. Like he's gonna be, he's gonna be adventurous. He's gonna get out there. He's gonna do something for Jesus. Well, this kind of backfires on me in the moment because he's going outside to play and he's playing in the street. I'm thinking, I'm not gonna tell Laura this. I do tell Laura. Listen, there is no perfect mom there's no perfect dad. And y'all, there is certainly not a perfect pastor in the room as well. Listen, we can all make mistakes. We can all mess up. We can even mess up with our kids at times. But we know that God has them and God is with them. And, and I just want to encourage you this morning because, you know, Mary was encouraged by God with this. Ma God said to Mary, listen, the Lord is with you. I mean, this is an impossible task to raise the Son of God. Something could have happened that day, but you have to know that the Lord is with you. Hey, turn your neighbor right now, tap him and say, the Lord is with you. All right, turn your other neighbor, the one you don't like as much, and say, the Lord is with you too. <laughs> I'm just joking. Just joking, just joking. Hey, and, and, and then tell yourself this morning, the Lord is with me. Come on, you really got to know this, the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with you. You know, we can look around at everything that's happening today. We can look around at the world today and think, man, it is such a difficult time. And I don't know how my son, how my daughter is going to make it in this current climate today. I mean, it just looks crazy out there. And you can get to a point to where you're discouraged, but you got to know this, that the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Like... Man, the creator of the universe, the one who is in control of it all, the one who is sovereign over everything, this same God is with you. This God is with you, and if God is for you, what? Who can be against you? Like Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit, he lives inside of you if you've given your life to him, and he is with you. He is helping you out. You might be feeling this morning like, man, Adam, I just feel alone today. I've been betrayed by a friend or, man, I don't have anybody else around me to kind of share my thoughts with and what's going on and this stuff happening inside. I don't have any help. Uh, I don't have family around to help me with my kids. And I just feel alone. You got to know this, the simple, simple, simple truth that the Lord is with you. Say it one more time. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with you. The second thing that I want to give you this morning is this, mom, you were chosen. Mom, you were chosen by God. Your child was chosen for you and you were chosen for your child. God chose you for your child and God chose your child for you. Look at this, think about Mary's circumstances. Luke 1, 31 says this, <laughs> and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. I don't know about you, but if I'm finding that out before I even conceive a child that I'm going to have a son, I mean, there's no gender reveal party that Mary gets to have. <laughs> and then the angel says this to her, and you shall call his name Jesus. She even get to name her own son that she's going to give birth to. Can you imagine that? Mary was chosen by God, though, because he knew that she'd be able to handle all the challenges that were in front of her, and you were chosen by God because he knew that you would be able to handle every challenge that was in front of you this morning. No matter what it is, whether you're a mom in this room or you're struggling in your job today or another circumstance in your life, God has chosen you to do what you are called to do. Look at this now, Luke 2, verse 52. Luke 2, 52, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and all the people. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. So theologians, they call this the missing years. This is the time between what we see Jesus here in, uh, at 12 years old to 
the time that he starts his public ministry at 30 years old. We don't really see anything else between those years. They call it the missing years. But what we do see here is that Mary, she was pouring in to her son. She was loving on her son. She was nurturing her son. Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor. He grew uh, physically, spiritually, and emotionally because of his mother's love. But then there came a point to where Mary had to release Jesus to do his ministry. And he had, she had to trust God with the Lord. There comes a point in all of our lives where we've got to say, okay, Lord, I trust you with my child. I trust you, Lord, I, don't, I can't really do anything from here, but Lord, I've done what I was supposed to do and I've loved on them and I trust you with my child. Consider this and think about this. Jeremiah 1.5 tells us very clearly this. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctify you and I ordained you. God knew us before we were even formed in the womb. Before you felt that first kick in your belly like Jesus knew about your child. It's just eternity past. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. And he's been thinking about your child. And he trusted you with your child. And now there comes a point where he's got to say, Lord, I trust you, God, with them. Like he formed them and shaped them in your womb. And now he's saying, okay, there comes a time where, I, Lord, I just trust you. And here's a really encouraging verse I want to give you. This is Philippians 1.6. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he who be, has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, there are a lot of mothers in this room, and you're, you're concerned right now. Are they going to make the right decisions? Are they going to make uh, the right choices? Man, uh, Lord, I, I don't really know. I mean, they're really struggling right now, and I'm just really not sure, but I want to encourage you this morning to know he who began a faithful work will be just to, f to finish it to completion. Amen? And this is why this verse is so important here in Proverbs, that if you will train up a child in the way it should go, they will not depart from it as they get old. I'm kind of paraphrasing right there. They will not depart from it as they get old. You might be saying, Adam, <laughs> they're, they're 40 and they're still not following the Lord. I just, you know, I think about old, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm 40. A lot of people told me I'm not old yet. Old is kind of relative. I mean, 15-year-old can act like they're 55. A 55-year-old can act like they're 15. And this is what I'm just kind of encouraging with t today, is that at some point, you're going to connect the dots from what you did. And maybe you're in this room right now, and you might be saying, Adam, I didn't raise them in a home. I just recently came to the Lord. I didn't raise them in a home that, where I took them to church and share the love of God with them. And so what it, I have no hope. I'm going to give you some hope today. You know, the Bible says this, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. And man, if you pray for your child, there is power in that prayer. You may have not had the opportunity to raise them in a home like that, but man, prayer is powerful. And I know the power of a praying mother. So the point three this morning, Mom, never stop praying. Don't ever quit praying for your child. Look at Luke 2, 51. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother, Mary, stored all these things in her heart. Stored all these things in her heart. It says Mary kept all these things in her heart. Think of everything that happened to Mary. I mean, an angel comes and visits her. You're going to have a son. You're going to name him Jesus. She carries this child, goes to Bethlehem, born in a manger. Wise men come and to worship him. And, and, and all these things are happening in which she is told that you're going to give birth to the Son of God. And so she hides these things and she holds them in her heart. She doesn't post them on Facebook. She doesn't post them on Instagram. She hides the word of the Lord and what God has spoken over her child in her heart. This is my encouragement to you today, is ask the Lord, Lord, what is a scripture that you want me to pray over my child? 
Lord, will you just give me something so I can pray this over my child? And I'm going to stand on it every single day and believe that, man, the word of the Lord will come to pass in their life. Lord, show me something. There's something so powerful about that. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person, what? It avails much. You know, I told you last week about my mom who, who passed away when I was five years old and uh, what my family kind of went through during that season. You know, but I've been blessed with two amazing moms. My dad, he remarried when I was 13. And man, my mom, I call her my mom, uh, she loved me like I was her own. She nurtured me and man, she just showed the love of God to me. And she was, she is the most amazing woman on the face of the planet. Man, she has been praying for me since she stepped into this role as my mom when I was just 13 years old. I remember she would tell me often as I was going off uh, to school <laughs> and, uh, that, Adam, I'm praying today that your sins find you out and the Lord will tell me <laughs> what you do. And I'm like, Mom, you really don't have to do that. <laughs> and sure enough, I'm telling you, the Lord would tell her and I would get caught every single time that I did something. Because, man, she would hide herself in a secret place, and, man, she would pray for me and believe the best in me and speak life into me, and she would want to know if I did something wrong. And if I did do something wrong, man, she, would, she and my dad, they would discipline me, but they would love me through it. And she loved me like her own. She prayed for me daily, daily, daily. I mean, even, you know, in my life, like she would, I know she prays with me to this day because she'll give me, a word from God ever so often, like, Adam, I feel like God is speaking this to you right now and saying this to you. Man, what a gift of a praying mom, amen? So I'm encouraging you, you might have messed up some things in the past and everything, that's okay. But I'm telling you here this morning, if you will pray and you will intercede and you will contend for the salvation of your child, maybe they've walked away from the Lord, maybe they're struggling right now, but if you will do that, there is no stopping a person, especially a mom, who will pray for their kids. And the promises of God in which he has spoken to you, they will come to pass. Because the effectual for a prayer of a righteous person, what? It avails much. So my encouragement you, to you today is that you're enough. You're enough because Jesus is enough. Pray for your child. Love your child, like I know that you do. Contend for your child. Be there for your child. Create an environment in your home to where, man, they see and they know the Lord through you and how you are. And it doesn't mean we're going to be perfect all the time because there's no perfect mom. We're going to mess up. But what it does mean is God's going to be there with you to help you. Would you rise with me in this room? I want to pray for you. There's a couple of things that I want to pray for. The uh, prayer team would come forward right now and invite you. Maybe in this room today, as we've talked about, it, Mother's Day is a difficult day for you. You know the circumstance, the situation, and I want to pray for you about that. Another thing is maybe there's a prodigal, a son or daughter who's walked away from God and they don't know the Lord. Or maybe they do know the Lord, they're just not following the Lord. I want to pray for that as well. There could be in many other circumstances, but those are the two specific things that I want to pray for this morning for you. And so if you would, everyone in this room, would you just bow your heads and close your eyes? If that is you and you're struggling in one of those two areas, would you just lift your hand? I just want to know who I'm praying for this morning. Lord, I pray right now, for every person in this room who's raised their hand or maybe in this room today, God, they just didn't want to raise their hand, God, but they're struggling.